With the release of the Indigo Disc and basically closing out Scarlet and Violet for now, I think it's safe to say this. Pokemon lore as of late has been less than satisfactory, however their strength lies within the characters and how they interact with each other. This is especially true of Pokemon Masters, where you would rather skip the gameplay and enjoy the small character interactions they do. Penny interacting with Hugh and Bianca is something I didn't know I needed. Obviously, this list isn't going to be exhaustive, but I will be mostly focusing on the Paldea characters and the Kitakami characters. Obviously, Florian and Juliana are not going to be on the table, since Masters needs to add them and give them actual personalities. Also, I may be putting up with the whole fact that Masters takes place in a bizarro multiverse, since Chairman Rose's story confirms that. So, speaking of Chairman Rose, let's give him a story with Penny. The Indigo Disc, we learn that Penny is the daughter of Peony. This means, by extension, she is the niece of Chairman Rose. Let's also throw in Silver for this storyline. It would honestly be interesting to see Silver and Penny interact. Silver is the heir to Team Rocket's boss, but he absolutely detests Team Rocket with every single fiber of his being. Meanwhile, there's Penny, who is the leader of Team Star, a group of outcasts who became an evil team, because it do be like that sometimes. I can imagine Rose being disappointed in Penny's whole evil team ambitions being a member of Team Star, while Penny would fire back and say Rose's plan to solve a problem that is a thousand years away using a giant alien snake dragon is kinda cringe, probably the exact wording she would use. And of course Silver would be there to just call them both idiots, but he'd probably call Chairman Rose a bigger idiot with the whole giant snake dragon scheme. Okay, so time for the other low-hanging fruit to deal with, Lacey and Clay. Lacey is Clay's daughter, and I really only put them on this list because I wanted to see where this interaction came from. The dialogue states clearly from Scarlet and Violet that Clay is so intimidating that he either implicitly or explicitly chases off all the boys with his mere presence. <laughs> that is hilarious. The next characters I want to say deserve a story together is probably Wally and Kieran, because these two walked similar paths. Wally's pursuit of power made him grow cold and more methodical by the post-game, a trait that Masters expanded upon to the point he started discarding his own Pokémon's feelings. Kieran snapped during the Scarlet and Violet DLC, and he doubled down on his worst traits, becoming stronger at the cost of his sanity. It's interesting to see Wally's journey is about him growing healthier with his Pokemon and then growing colder, while Kieran's journey is basically just a drop-down spiral of an unhealthy obsession removing his sanity. The next thing I'd like to probably go through is Iris and Drayton. Iris isn't related to Drayton, but she does call him Grandpa as a term of endearment. Drayton probably sees her as either an usurper, or he pretends not to care, because, of course, he's the slacker. I'd like to see some level of resentment between him and Iris, mostly from his end. Black and White 2 establishes the dress Iris wears during her champion battles is from Drayton, which Drayton either sees as insulting or fuels his hatred of her or resentment or whatever they go with. It's easy to see that Drayton's slacking and laziness stem from the apathy, since everyone growing up, and probably even now, compare him to Iris, to the point that he grew apathetic because nothing he does would ever amount to her, so why bother keep pushing when he can just get by? We also establish in Masters that Iris feels a bit insecure from being a newer champion than the rest, so I think that's a commonality they could reasonably bond over and write a story for. Drayton's insecurities come from having expectations thrusted upon him, while Iris's insecurities come from expectations she thrusted upon herself. This next one I really only put down for comedy, but Gladion and Carmine having a storyline with Gladion being so emo and doing his various emo poses getting on Carmine's nerves would be hilarious. They also would probably bond over the concept of strength and weaknesses. Gladion grew strong and effectively abandoned his family during one of the worst times of their lives. Meanwhile, Carmine grew terrified of her own brother. That's it for this fanfic video. Please consider liking, subscribing, tipping the channel on Ko-fi, and sharing your thoughts in the comments section below. This is Cyril signing off.